Okay. Good evening, everybody. Happy New Year, and welcome to our team call at the beginning of every week. We have an amazing guest speaker for you tonight. Our speaker tonight is the amazing Debbie Wetzler. So for those of you that haven't had the pleasure of meeting Debbie, you get to know her a little bit better tonight, hear more about her story and why she's decided to join forces with this incredible company called ASEA. So Debbie, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, my pleasure. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. What were you doing in the world before you found out about ASEA? I, I've actually had quite a exciting life to me, but um, <clears throat> I graduated college with, in fashion merchandising and I'd gone off and I worked at, um, I decided just to take a um, kind of a little bit of time off because I knew, you know, once you get into life and you get married and you have kids, you're kind of tied down. So after college, I took off and went to Lake Tahoe and I skied and I uh, worked in a casino and that taught me what I did not want to do. <laughs> And that was quite eye-opening for me. Um, and it was it, it's kind of a sad life. But anyway, it was it was fun for a year. And then I moved to Aspen and I was um I skied again there and um and I won't go into this long drawn out thing, so don't worry. But anyway, and then I finally did get into my fashion merchandising by managing and buying for a ski shop there. And that's where I met my then husband, and we moved back east. And uh, I kept in fashion merchandising and then went in from there into interior design. And I was an interior designer for many years, owned my own business, uh, did my own marketing. It was very much word of mouth, the same as what we do with uh, network marketing. And we never had to advertise. We just always had jobs. It was wonderful. We were featured in the Washington Post and the Washingtonian Magazine. Um, and we were we were doing very well. And I really loved it because I felt like I was helping people to have a cocoon when they came home of where they wanted to be and a place to feel good. Um, even though uh, in my past, I had always wanted to actually be a scientist or a doctor and, um, and help hu humanity by discovering cures or, or doing something fun, fun for me like that. Um, but my life has had a wonderful twist on that um, because I think even if a cure had been discovered by someone like me, it probably wouldn't be out there still. Um, my dad got sick and got cancer and he passed away from that and he was my hero. And I saw what chemo and radiation did and I went on a quest to find other ways to help people. And it brought me to my first and only other company that I was with and that was in the wellness. And so I've been in wellness for 18 years at this point. Um, looking for things to help better the human body and the wellness of the mind and just all of that mixed together. And uh, the products were wonderful. I still use most of them. But um, as people say, they were starting to make some decisions that weren't in integrity to me. And I kept watching them. And they weren't, it wasn't a, a company I wanted to align myself with anymore because of their decisions and what was happening. And, um, and then my life kind of took an upside down. I think it was a, a time that I was supposed to be learning from. And um, I had stepped down from interior design just to help another very creative man who was creating a children's website that was extraordinary that Disney and Pixel both put offers in on. But he did not know how to run a company. And another great learning thing for me, because that's one of the things I looked for in another company after that. And um, he went bankrupt after a year in 2018 when the economy tanked. And I was left with absolutely nothing coming in at all. And no one wanted interior designers at that point. Everyone was trying to save their homes. They weren't looking for to decorate. And so I was left panic stricken, honestly, and not knowing what to do. Both of my children, I didn't want to let know that I was in serious hurts. My daughter was still going to college. She didn't need that on her plate. Um, my mother was older and was alone. My father had passed away and uh, I didn't need to put the stress on her. So I held it all to myself. There's not many people that can help you with stuff like that. And so I, I applied for loan modifications to help save my home. They kept turning me down. I wasn't making enough money. I'd finally found a job as a server in a restaurant. 
I was working double shifts to try to make enough to cover everything. And I was getting further and further behind in my mortgage. So they finally did send me a letter, <clears throat> which I wish I'd kept. I think I threw it away. Um, just stating that they were going to foreclose on my house. And that's the night that I, I absolutely did felt completely lost and not knowing what I was going to do at all. <clears throat> but I knew if I turned my, myself over to the, to the universe, to the divine, that I would get help basically. So I went up and said a huge prayer. And I said, please, I know I can do this. I just need a way to be able to do this. Can you show me a way? And the very next morning, before I even got out of bed, Cindy Bucket had called me about ASEA. And I just looked up, and she didn't know this. <laughs> I just looked up and said, thank you. Because I, I just had this intuitive feeling. Anyway, she sent me a video. I, I remember watching it probably about four or five times and just thinking, my gosh, if this is true, then this has got to be huge. Just absolutely huge. I called the only person. I trusted Cindy implicitly. Uh, we'd worked together in the other company and Bo. And she told me some stories that she just shared on our team phone call that just gave me goosebumps about how this had helped three of her best friends and saved their lives. So. I knew it was real, but I think all of us being human beings want to, to know a little bit more or validate it and just one more way or something. So I instinctively called a girlfriend of mine who was just very smart, graduated from Johns Hopkins. And I think most of you have heard this, but she worked at the National Institute of Health in the mental division. And I remember sh showing her the information and I will never, I was just with her yesterday. We had brunch together. She's flown in from California. I'll never forget her face that day. And she just looked and she said, Debbie, you have no idea how massive this is. This is going to change the medical field as you know it. We've had scientists from around the world come and try to do this and no one's ever been able to, to stabilize these molecules. I can't believe you're telling me somebody was able to stabilize these outside the human body in a bioactive form. And she immediately got a textbook off and she started teaching me all this stuff about it and how it was going to cross the blood brain barrier and all the amazing results we were going to have in the brain. And she looked it up immediately to find out that it was completely non-toxic and very safe. Um, all this of which Cindy had told me, but um, she looked it up herself. She's a scientist and um, she got right on the product and she's been on it ever since. And she's told several people about it at this point. Um, so I got my mother on it and I started seeing results and I was, I knew I had to find a way. The launch of the product was coming up like two weeks after I signed up and I'm telling you, I was completely bankrupt. So I had no idea how I was going to get there, but I kind of pl plotted with a girlfriend that I'd happened to have in the other company also who Cindy had signed up, Nancy Voss. <laughs> And she kept talking to me. She goes, you've got to get there. And I've got to find a way too. So I actually called a, a, an airline pilot, a friend of mine. And I just said, I know you guys have buddy passes and I, don't, I know you don't always use them. And I said, I was wondering if I could borrow two of them. One for me and one for Nancy. <laughs> and that's how we were able to fly to that launch of the product because he gave us these two passes. And I remember getting to the airport at 6.30 in the morning to be able to get on the flight so we would make it there because I knew the early flights are the ones that didn't fill up. But if you were flying standby, which all buddy passes do, um, then there was a great likelihood of you being not being able to get on the plane. So we got there at oh dark hundred, got on the plane. We were so <laughs> excited. We were going to fly to Las Vegas and stay at the Paris and we shared a room so we could afford anything. And, uh, I didn't pay for my electric bill, I think, that month, so I could afford the, <laughs> the room at the, at the Vegas uh, Paris place. And I just remember hearing stories that Cindy had already heard, basically, because she'd been flying and going to all the fly-ins. And it was my first time. And those men were on stage, and they told the story of how this first got started. And I just remember having chills almost the whole weekend going, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. I have found my home. I remember thinking it was a mission. It was a purpose. 
this man turned down hundreds of millions of dollars to be able to tell this to the world. Uh, he stood on stage and asked us if we wouldn't help him get the information out. And when you're asked by Virtus Norton to do something, you immediately march up to him and said, I am in your army. I will definitely help you get this out there. I will definitely take the arrows that I know I'm going to get for trying to teach people about redox and salt water. Um, and I remember so many things, but there was one, I remember there was a doctor's panel with all the scientists and Dr. Gary Samuelson up there. And I will just never forget also that people were asking question after question. <clears throat> and there was one long pause and we all turned around to see what was happening. And this girl had the microphone with just tears streaming down her cheeks. And she just said, it still gets to me. Two months ago, I wasn't able to say thank you. And now I don't know how. And we learned that she'd been so mentally disabled that she couldn't even speak. Hmm. And she'd been able to bring her back. Um, and the cells in her body and her brain were starting to work again. Hmm. And I was just, I was so struck by all of this. And I remember the, the divine appointments that Cindy was just talking about. And I was sitting there and a girl's name popped into my head that I didn't talk to very often, but we were friends. She'd been searching for years for her two sons because they couldn't figure out was, what was wrong with them, but they were in constant pain. And, uh, uh, and it was Beverly Trapnell. And I called her and I said, Beverly, I think I found something for your boys and you have to call me. And that's all I said. And I remember her not calling for a full week and that was not like Beverly. But when she finally called, she said, Debbie, do you know where I was? And I said, no. She said, my mother finally gave me a trip to Italy. I've always wanted to go. We're, we're Italian, so that's what I wanted to do. And she said, yours was the only message on my phone when I got home. So I don't know what this is, but bring it on. And then she said, what day did you call me? And I said, it was Saturday. I was at the launch of this product. You have no idea what I heard there. And she said, do you know where I was on Saturday? And I said, no, I have no idea. And she said, I was on my knees in the Vatican praying for something <laughs> for my two sons. And I just kept getting messages like that over and over and over that I was in the right place, that this company was had its <clears throat> inspiration from a higher power, basically, and that it was truly something that the world definitely needed to know about. And I've never looked back once. I mean, I... I am so excited every single day and my mission is to get my butt out of the house more and tell more people about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, I certainly, I certainly tell, I I'm on three ways every single day. So I am telling and sharing this story with people and it's, it's truly changed my life and so many people's that, it, that have, you know, that we've been able to share it with totally. and as, and the rep, ripple effect. I mean, I told some of my friends from my old company and some of my old friends from my old town and they've told people that I know and we've had so many wonderful people come in who we knew before even. So it is like a family again. Absolutely. So Debbie, when you saw the big picture and you knew in your guts that this was worthy of your time, that it was a very special thing to come across your desk, that you were, you know, privileged enough to be, you know, know about this before the rest of the world knew about it. What did you do? I mean, you said you called people like Beverly and people that, you know, from your old neighborhood. And But what did you do? Did you have in-homes? Did you just call people and, you know, tell walk us through that path of how you got started and what you did to create the foundation that has, you know, become what it is today? Well, I was in an unusual situation. I was still working double shifts because I had to. I had to have the money to... Uh, be able to even feed my daughter, honestly. And so I, I remember, never forget that I had a, a break from four to 4.20 every day. That was when you were expected to get your food and take a short break. And then you were on your feet the rest of the time because it was double shifts. And most people didn't work double shifts, but I was. Uh, and so I literally would uh, go out to my car, take a little bit to eat and 
I would just call people and it was probably only maybe three people if I was lucky a day, if I got that in. Sometimes it was two because they'd answer their phone and want to talk. And I would be virtually just say, I think I found something that you need to hear about. And, uh, you know, whatever you do with it is your, is your decision, but um, it's extraordinary. You've just got to know about it. And they heard that in my voice because I had gone to the launch. I, I know if I hadn't gone to the launch, I wouldn't have that conviction because that was so many stories that were built on me hearing what was going on. You added to it. Bo added to it. Um, seeing my mother turn around added to it. Everything, you know, was coming to me. And uh, they heard it in my voice. And so I would, they would say yes, of course, they'd watch a video because that's what I was doing. I'd go home at night. It would be midnight most of the time. I'd send them the video. I would have set up that I was going to call them back with somebody who knew a lot more than I did on the phone, which was you. <laughs> and I remember calling you and saying, are you free between 2 and 2.20 your time? And a lot of times you were. And if you weren't, I'd, I'd call Tammy or somebody like that. But because uh, you were still teaching skiing and you still do to some degree because you love that. Um, but anyway, and Bo was completely gone. He was working. So anyway, I used you all the time. And every time I, I had you on the phone, I would learn something different because you'd say something different about what you'd learned at the fly in or, or how the story of this became and stuff. And I hadn't heard that story very often, so I didn't know it yet. So I just kept learning and learning and learning from you. And uh, you were very good about, you know, answering their questions and asking them if they needed more information or if they were ready to get started. And so together we started signing up people <laughs> um, who were trying the product and having amazing results and just adding to my belief system basically. And it finally got to the point uh, where, where I was making enough money. I mean, it was, it wasn't that much still because I went more slowly than a lot of diamonds did because I just had 20 minutes a day. Um, but it finally got to the point where I could quit d working during the day because you didn't make as much money during the day. I was still working every night and you guys were such, that's why I love working as a team. Every time I had to work, I would tell my team, if you need anything, please call the bucks or the gates. And you guys were always there and you helped so many people. And uh, so I, I strongly encourage anyone to make sure that you're working as a team, make sure that you know to be coachable and, <clears throat> and use us basically, because we're here to help. But anyway, so I was able to cut back and I could put a little bit more time into it. And finally, by the time, all this time, my son was preparing to propose to someone and he was having a wedding. In, in the month he was about to get married in June, I was able to walk into the restaurant and said, is there a way that I could take a break? Because I was still afraid that I was going to make enough money. <laughs> and they said, sure, you can go on a leave. And so I went on a leave and I've never officially quit. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm still a server there. And there were, no, but anyway, I was able to quit that month, the month he got married and put a lot of time into helping with the rehearsal dinner. And I was proudly, proudly able to pay for his rehearsal dinner which I would have never done, been able to um, the year before. I wasn't even able to give them Christmas gifts. And if anybody knows me, I love giving. And that killed me, I think, more than anything in my life, not being able to do anything for them at Christmas time. And yeah. so this has really changed my life. Yeah. And that's Debbie, what I did. You, you put on a, a lot of big events out in Maryland. I know that there's a, an Envision event coming up in two Saturdays. What are the, how important are events and how much uh, does, does people's vision grow at events? I mean, I know that the launch was a huge eye opener for you. You know, as much as we tried to tell you, a, a big event just is, does different things, doesn't it? Absolutely. And I knew that from my past company, it was, you know, the fear of trying to get there to the first one at least, but it's pivotal. I, I can tell you that again, there were so many people that helped when I first got started. Um, I remember Trish came out about three times and Alan Noble came out once. Justin Wilson came out three times. Jim Pack, one of our first owners came out. Uh, he was the very first big event and they called me and I was petrified. 
I had just literally started and he was coming in November and I just really started in September. And he, they said, can you get 60 people in a room? And I went, cause then Jim Pack will come speak. And I, I, I just kind of freaked out, but said, yes, of course I can. <laughs> <laughs> I hung up and just lost it and went, oh my God, how am I going to do that? And so I, you know, it's the excitement and the, and they're, and they're putting ownership on you. And so I just started calling everybody saying, you really have to be there. This man is the, one of the founders of our company and this company is extraordinary and promise me you're going to be there. And so between Nancy Voss and I, we got 60 people in the room and he came and spoke. And I can't tell you what that did because people came, they saw it, they saw it in his voice, you know, and they heard the conviction and it, and they heard it was a third party. It's like a three-way phone call. And then they'd come and hear Justin Wilson and we'd get every time there would be more and more people until finally, I know Cindy and Bo came out. There was about 400 people in the room that day. Uh, and it was huge. And we were all so excited and, and there's nothing like being in the energy. And I, I always compare it. And so uh, apologies if you've heard this before, but to a symphony, you know how you feel if you go to a symphony or a, a concert, but there's no way to get across that feeling and the energy and the music and the sound and the experience to somebody else if they weren't there. It's the same thing in an event. You've got to be there in order to, to experience it and to hear those first hand stories of how this has changed somebody's life. I can rehash what they did for people, but if you hear them say it with the tears in their eyes, it's, it's so different. And so, yes, if you can get people to big events anywhere, uh, even on Zoom calls like this, uh, it's pivotal. Yeah, absolutely. So we've been at this for eight years. We've done all kinds of things, opened a new world headquarters, built a production facility. You know, we've, we've, you know, got a new IT system. We're open in 36 countries around the world. There's a, a lot of infrastructure that's been put in place. So where do you see us going? We've been here eight years. Have we just begun? Where are we right now? No, I think the just begun part is, is finally over. And, uh, and in some ways I'll miss that incredibly because there's so many fun things that have happened the things that we've rolled our eyes at. I don't know how many IT systems we've gone through, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm very much over that. Uh, and it's always fun to have those memories, but the exciting part is just coming up. And you know, if you've ever met Virtus, that when he said his vision of a company is a billion dollar company at least, that you know where this is gonna go. Because he didn't create this and give up his time at age 70 if this wasn't going to be huge and was going to impact, wasn't it going to impact the world? And he has put men in charge and women in charge um, of creating this company um, who are, they're probably still behind the gun from everything they were doing last year and from trying to open these countries right now. And they could probably use some help. However, they're very competent and they're moving us forward. And as long as they've got a field of people like the incredible people on this call who have seen the vision of this and know where this is going, they are the ones that are going to move us forward and they'll take care of us while we're doing this. They'll make sure where they have the research and the product and everything. And, you know, as long as you are telling people about this with your conviction, then this company is, is, has already started hitting momentum. I did that at the end of last year. I mean, with our biggest quarter ever, $5 million ahead of where we were the year before, uh, the highest, we've gone up every single year. So this is, this is the year with the, with the expansion that's going on that's going to really jet propel us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Debbie, if you were to give one piece of advice that has really add, you know, contributed to the business that you've built what would that one piece of advice be? If somebody wanted to get to the next level, say they wanted to get to bronze or silver, you know, gold or all the way to the diamond levels, what would be your one piece of advice that would help these people move forward to where they want to go? I would say to be an in integrity 
And that means being very, very comfortable with, with all the different aspects, with the network marketing piece, with the product piece, um, with the company piece, with yourself. Because that is the only way people are going to trust you. Because even though this product is extraordinary, people are going to come into your life and your world and your team if they trust you. And I can't tell you what that means to, to have somebody trust you enough to try the product because they're buying you. And so you need to be your highest caliber coming in. And that's what I think this company is attracted. And that's, I think what I love about the company the most. And I think almost everybody knew that I've ever brought somewhere. That's the first comment they make when they get out of it with it. when they get out of a big event, Oh my gosh, the people I met today were extraordinary. I've never met people like this in any other company. And I think that's what we're attracting. And I think that's what's going to make us move forward very, very quickly. And if you want to get to the top, you have to have people's trust. You have to be a leader. Um, and being in integrity is being that. And so get comfortable with anything that you're not comfortable with right now. And make sure you're rock solid on all of that. And know yourself and know that you can do this. Everybody is worthy of this. So Debbie, you've made sacrifices and done whatever it takes to build the business that you've built. And I know that you've been able to pay for your son's rehearsal dinner. You've been able to, you know, help your daughter. You've been able to save your house. You've been able to do a lot of things. But what kind of lifestyle beyond the product benefits has this business brought to you? Well, I can tell you that pretty much everywhere I go, especially in, with my old friends, they, they just, every single person comments, oh my God, your life is amazing. You've created this, haven't you? I see you're going everywhere. I'm so jealous. I am still working at Geico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working here. I'm still working there. And I'm like, you can come with me. You can be with me if you want. You can create your own life. Why are you still working there if you hate it? You know, but people are afraid. I, I, you know, it's definitely being afraid. And you have to create your life and step into it. And so the lifestyle, I, I don't think I could ask for anything more. My children are great. <clears throat> I'm able to provide if they need it. Um, but I get to, I really do get to travel to some extraordinary places with friends that I absolutely love, like Buck, Bo and Cindy, the Bucks. Um, we've had some very funny experiences together. <laughs> <laughs> We're just always laughing and just having a great time. And there's nothing like that to be able to travel the world with some of your best friends and uh, go where you want or be home with the people that you love here um, and have the life of your dreams, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's available to any, anybody, but you have to work to get it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Well, Debbie, if you have a couple more minutes, I'd love to open it up for some questions. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. Okay, well, if you have a question for the amazing Debbie Wetzler, just wave your hand and unmute yourself on the lower left-hand corner of your screen. You've got her undivided attention, so now is your time. Don't be shy. Anybody have a question? Debbie. Yes. <laughs> so uh, you were about to explain about being, um, well, let's see. So you, you were one of the few diamonds that's a, uh, doing it solo. Can you tell me more about that and how you've pulled that off? Is that Maria? Yes. Okay. Hey, Maria. Hey. Uh, I, the short answer to that is I pulled it off because I had to. <laughs> um, in, in, in many ways, I, I think it would be easier to have somebody there to be of help. Um, a lot of our diamonds pool their, um, their talents, and some are very good on the computer with IT, and some are very good at talking to people. And there's a great combination there, and they move together very quickly and stuff. Uh, and I, I can say it's been difficult to do almost everything by yourself, uh, presenting, learning how to present, 
uh, doing the emails, doing, you know, just everything. But on some hands, it's um, easier not to have to go to somebody to always make a decision. <laughs> Um, and just be able to do what you want to do to some degree. Uh, so it's kind of a catch-22. Um, I, I definitely have to stay very organized. Um, I have to write down what I'm going to, what I want to accomplish the next day. I got a passion planner. It's a book that Tammy Gates actually told me about. Uh, it's an old fashioned way of doing things, but it literally holds everything I want to get done done in it. And, uh, I don't make I don't make any kind of a move without looking at that first because I was getting my family and my business and I was having conflicts because I'd, you know, I'd say I'd be at somebody's soccer game. And then all of a sudden I realized that that was a big event that I had to be at or something. And I was getting him confused anyway. <clears throat> I, so I keep myself very organized by writing literally everything down personal and private and business wise in this book. I know exactly what I, I'm doing. A lot of the times I write down what I want to get done the next day, who I need to call. Um, uh, I put all the events in, I, you know, like I'm going to be at the one in Denver soon. So that's down on my weekend for there. So I don't book anything else by accident. Um, and if it wasn't for that, I would still be, you know, needing help. And then I rely on my team a lot too. I mean, you know, we all put our heads together and like the diamond on call night, I, David and I had kind of been doing them, so I I organized that. But in the meantime, Cindy and Bo were doing the trainings every Friday, and they've and they are putting our um, our mastermind calls together as to who we're having on as guests. Everybody contributes something. I mean, Denny's put together the health healthy challenge thing. Um, Tammy's on the advisory board. Everybody does something, and so we share that information. So that's why I keep saying work as a team because. If you can put a lot of great minds together, it's like, you know, uh, what's that book by Napoleon Hill, The Science of, no. Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. You know, you, you put a mastermind team together and we all work together and we all help each other. And so that's where I get a lot of my stuff and they pass it on to me. Uh, I've asked for PowerPoints from people because so, I didn't have time to put them together. So if we all work together, we get things done and I'm able to, that's the only way I am able to do part of it definitely um and i feel like i can call them for advice and and a sounding board also so again get people that you want to work with hopefully it's part of your own team and and partner with them because they can be of extraordinary help to you uh and you can always ask us for information and and stuff also and uh move forward with that team because that's yeah, definitely what I've done. I I depend on them a lot and they're there for me. And, you know, so I try to contribute back and do my fair share also. And that's that the help, best Maria? Thing. Great. Thank you. Of course. Absolutely. Any other questions? Anybody just wave your hand and unmute yourself if you got a question. Anybody, anybody? Emily. Okay. Hi, Emily. Hi, Debbie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Um, I just had a little thought when you were talking about the video that you watched with Cindy the first time. Do you remember what it was? It's the only one we had. It was, it was Alan Noble's uh, A Sea of Breakthrough. Oh, nice. And, and he, in his wisdom, I mean, that's why that's why this company has been successful. They've, they've had some re really good field leaders that have come in. He realized right away that no one was going to be able to tell people what redox molecules was and stepped down in order to create that video, that PowerPoint for us so that we would be able to send that to people. And that would explain it, you know, and we wouldn't have to, I didn't know what redox molecules were to begin with. Right. Um, so that's, that's still a very, very good one to use. He's done a great job. But that's the only one we had. What's so your, it keep it more simple for us. Nice. <laughs> What's your process like? Um, do you s oftentimes call someone cold or do you send people videos and then just say, you know, can I follow up with you after the video? Or what do you do today still in your recruiting process? Well, 
I have. Uh, I know you said you were doing a lot. I've of changed it a little bit in that I really do try to present something to them right then. If I've created the interest, I try to get. Um, I try to do a present, a very short presentation right then, so I don't have to send them something and try to follow up a little bit later. Um, and so, um, and I will. Still, I still use three ways all the time. I don't think there's one person that have come in that I haven't put them on the phone with somebody to create a larger vision. Mm -hmm. And I still do use the bucks, you know, but, you know, it's, um, but Cindy put me on the phone with Trish and Alan and all these people. So I use quite a few of them sometimes. Um, and I, at the end of the presentation, I just kind of say, um, is there anything else you'd need to make a decision? And then I'm very quiet and I don't say anything else. Uh, Cause I think the first person that talks then loses. And um, a lot of times people will say, no, I, I guess I'm ready to kind of get started to try the product or they'll tell me they need more information or they have to do some research. We're uh, connecting with a, a man in Colorado Springs actually right now. And he um, he's all set to get started, but he has to run it by his ex-wife. And so stuff like that happens, but he just sent a text and he's, his wife was not opposed. So that's a good thing. So we get, might get started. That's the only thing I've changed. Occasionally, yes, yes, I still do send videos and I absolutely send the tools to people during the process if they need more information and or um, even afterwards. If they've decided to try the product, I say, here, you might want to watch this now. I almost always send the Genesis video at this point you know, so they can see the heart of the company and kind of meet the founders and safe. So I've changed it just a little bit so I don't have to chase people so much. Right. It's what I don't like doing. And the Genesis video, did that get updated? Is there a new link for that? Yeah, it's in your back office. It's in the, it's in the library. Okay. I got a passion planner too. <laughs> you got a what? I have a passion planner too. Great oh, resource, you guys, for writing things down. It's really... It, that saves my life. <clears throat> well, thank you but for yeah. your time. Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Emily. Anybody else? Anybody so else? Have, well, I have a comment. Unless, Ruth, do you have a question? Go ahead, Peg, and then we'll go to Ruth. Okay. I just wanted to kind of... Hi, Deb. I just wanted to... <laughs> I just wanted to kind of emphasize one of the things you said, Debbie, about events and the feeling of trust. Uh, we were at a leadership dinner. Uh, Tyler was doing a presentation and there was a bartender in the room, this, this woman. And she was listening and at the end of the whole evening, Tyler was one of the last people to leave. And he was walking out the door and this young bartender, I bet you she was 25, caught up with him and said, excuse me, could I talk to you for just a minute? And she said to him, you know, my family's been involved in this industry of network marketing my whole life. So I was just sitting back there waiting, waiting to hear the rah-rah, waiting to hear the hook come out, waiting to hear all of this. And she goes, this group of people were the most phenomenal people that I've worked with. And your talk was so inspiring and so moving. You've given me hope again. And I just wanted to say thank you. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. And I want to say that you were there, you were there at the launch with us. I was. You were, you were instrumental in getting me to, you know, know that this was the right place for me also because um, you were in my last company and I just remember so much connecting with you and having so much fun with you. And I remember you sitting there saying, you know, this is incredible and you're telling me so much about it. And we were, we went to lunch together, it, you know, big events and, and, and having people there talking to you the whole time is, is, is very, very important. Um, and it just set the whole tone for everything. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Peg. Yeah, Ruth? Where did you get the passion planner? <laughs> well, you, you can go to passionplanner.com, which is where I do it and just order it. Uh, I, uh, Tammy had told me about it. So I put Tammy's name in. Um, I think you get, if you put a referral in, I think 
you are able to send them to other people or something like that. Anyway, oh, so awesome. put Tammy's name in or put my name in. It doesn't really oh, matter. Put your name in. Okay, passionplanner.com. Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Gabby. Ruth, did you have something? I do. I had a couple. Thank you, Debbie, for coming on and telling us your story and giving us of these course. great tips. Um, uh, the first thing I was wondering about, I have these fleeting uh, fear of success things that come and go. And goal setting has been helping me with that. But what did you use or have you ever struggled with that? And the second question is, do you use ABC? I do use ABC. Just ABC so you know. or Genie? Genie, yeah. I do use that, yes. Uh, and I think uh, if you go to one of the envisions, you'll see some of the other reasons to do to use that um, again, because they keep improving it so much and corporate is really behind it at this point. Um, so I think that would be very helpful and you can get it for free for a while. So that's a, another good thing to try it out to see if it's right for you. Um, and the first question you asked me was fear of success. Uh, yeah, I think I think there's probably probably 99% of the people in the world don't feel worthy, pretty much. And I think people really have to work on that. And I think it's it, without going into long stories, things that have happened to them in their childhood, things that have been told to them, things that you know, they had one thing that shut them down, and and uh, that's been ingrained in them, and they kind of dwelled on it. And people just don't feel like they either don't know what to do if they become successful, you know, like if all of a sudden you get all this money, what are you going to do with it? And how are you going to invest and this and that, or they just mostly don't feel worthy. And so, yes, I have done quite a bit of personal development. Uh, I invest in myself once a year to do some kind of a course or something. Um, I have read an incredible amount of books. Florence Scovel Shin is one of my favorites for helping with that. She is. She wrote the game of life and how to play it. And it was what the secret was based on her writings. But most people don't know that. Um, but there are so many amazing books out there. Think and grow rich is another one. I've read most all of them at this point. And um, well, most all of them, I shouldn't say that there's <laughs> millions of them out there. I've read a lot of them. I'll put it that way. Uh, and tried to glean something from every single one of them and virtually no, I think the conviction comes to you eventually that, you know, well, I believe in God, I'll just put it that way. And I believe that he created all of us so that we are perfect the way we are. And we've all been given a talent and we've all got different talents. And that's why I depend on my team because my talents aren't the same as Cindy's. Cindy's always been a fast thinker on her feet and always able to speak up and always create, have these, amazing creative ideas. Well, I have other talents. I can't think of them right now, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but you know, everybody has special talents. Everybody is worthy, but I, you really do have to get into that into your head and you have to know that it, you know, if you really do believe in God, he's created you in a perfect way and there's nothing that you're lacking to be successful except your own your own mental knowledge knowing that you are totally worth it you're welcome <laughs> yeah fantastic yeah fear of success that's uh that's interesting if you think about what your what success might bring then you might kind of you might be able to drill down on on what you're truly afraid of like what is it a, is it a are you afraid of the responsibility is it afraid you're going to you know, lose friends when you become more successful than they are? <laughs> you know, you know, what, that what, what's that, Debbie? And that happens. Yeah. Yeah. And they want to hold you where they are. You know, they don't want you to be, they don't want you to move ahead and be more successful. You'll find that. I mean, it's not an easy process. Yeah. But think of the people you meet when you're flying with the eagles as pearl always says <laughs> yeah think of all the new friends you'll have yeah you can't become an eagle if you're hanging around with the turkeys right <laughs> right and some people come into our lives as everybody says for a season sometimes and 
and maybe you've had your friends right now for a season and, and it's time for you to move on. And it will be, they will be replaced with someone even more spectacular, basically. Yeah, they say that you tend to make as much money as the five people that you spend the most amount of time with. Yep. So if you're going to change your tax bracket, sometimes either friends come with you or you might have to find new friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm still trying to call Bill Gates, but he hasn't been hanging around me with me recently. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any final questions before we wrap it up for the night? Anybody else? All right. Well, Debbie, thank you so much. So is there anything you want to say before we wrap it up? I know you hate me throwing you on the spotlight. Okay. He's just shaking his head. So come on, Bo, say something. <laughs> <laughs> well, Debbie, thank you so much for who oh you are God. and what you do. And, you know, you know yes, I can't wait to be with you in the next couple of weeks. So yay. yeah. Yeah. Yes. For anybody who didn't get the announcements, we're doing an event um, in Denver, February 3rd. So the so amazing head coach will be there, Mike yeah. and Tina Saul, oh, Debbie Wetzler, awesome. a whole oh, bunch of Colorado awesome. people. So um, if and you want to join us, please join us at the uh, Golden uh, Center. Center. Um, uh, I'll send you a friend to make sure you get through a phone call with one of our friends in the area so that we so can, we can welcome, welcome them when they get there to join us. So Debbie, thanks so much. And I'll invite everybody so everybody can say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.